So welcome to Sports Vision Pros. I'm Dr. Keith Smithson. Uh, you've heard about me and, and we've talked plenty of times before about some exciting things. This is a really exciting topic I have for you today and we're really excited to have uh, Peter Fatty join us uh, to talk about a technology called GameSense. Uh, it's something that I've used personally with a lot of my teams and athletes uh, through the years. Uh, it's a really exciting platform. We wanted to uh, give a little introduction to what it is, how it works, and uh, you really kind of give you a little taste, a little appetizer so that you can come back and learn more uh, from us at Sports Vision Pros and from the, the team at GameSense. And I really wanted to kind of throw it to you to give us a quick little introduction, your background, uh, where you came from to get into this exciting world of, of GameSense sports. Well, I'd been working in um, sports video as a video coordinator for the college football program. My wife was teaching at Purdue and I was working there about 13 seasons. That's really breaking down all the film for the, for the coaches to study, their game analysis. And I was just building towards a, a PhD one, one course at a time over a much longer time than I, I should mention, like 13 years. Um, but then when it came down to doing the research, it was like, okay, I know that there's a lot more that can come from putting video and data together and for player learning, not just coaches, you know, game analysis, but for player learning. And that actually then led me to this whole body of research that I'd never known about before. A lot of it from Australia and a lot of it dealing not so much with football, but with things like goalie play, right? Uh, stopping a penalty kick or um, of course they would do cricket and return of serve baseball and softball hitting these just ballistic actions you know where it's just coming at you so fast that when you break it down really nobody should be able to do it i mean it's really beyond the limits of of our vision and perception or physical abilities to handle those things and yet people do and the really good ones look like they have all the time in the world they're just it's just easy you know, yeah how do they do that Really, really cool. You know, again, it's a, it's a great and important thing to talk about this remote learning, this remote teaching sort of capability. We're all doing it in classroom environments for our kids. Um, but this is a way for athletes to train some visual skills remotely, uh, which is an exciting thing to talk about, you know, certainly this time, but also I think leading into the future. And we've used GameSense for, for our athletes to supplement some of the training that we're doing in person. So I wanna talk quickly about the visual skills of baseball and softball specifically, as that's the major platform of Game Sense, uh, and we've talked about that before on Sports Vision Pros, where we break down sort of the visual assessment for an athlete uh, into really three major phases. One being sort of the clarity, the way that they actually see the target they're looking at, the baseball, let's say, in one situation. Uh, there's a muscular component where we're talking about things like uh, eye tracking, uh, muscular reaction capabilities, depth perception, things like that. And then we have what happens neurologically, and that's really the visual processing aspect we talk about, sort of the decision-making phase of the game. Uh, and that's really where game sense plays is in the visual processing arena. Is that right, Dr. Fatty? Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, and that's really well put. And, it, and it's kind of tricky for people to understand that there's kind of a difference between uh, vision and perception. You've got that visual input, but I think of perception then as what takes that input. You've got to have good input, garbage in, garbage out, right? But you got to have good input. And then you've got that processing that attaches it to an action. Because we know that that baseball swing at the high levels that you deal with is happening in well under half a second. I mean, like 0.4 seconds, uh, you know, boom, I click. And um, uh, so, you know, there's not a conscious thought process but I, I really like that you said process. There is a process, whether we can see it and count it or whatever, there is a process. There's vision, there's some kind of process in here and you're swinging the bat to a certain place and time where you think that ball is going to be. Yeah, uh, I think and, that's well put. It's, it's sort of the decision-making part of the game, right? I mean, we've talked about it in the, in the process of hitting a baseball or softball that you had to see it, you had to recognize it, you had to locate it in space, but then you have to make a very quick decision to Dr. Fatty's point to be able to initiate a swing quick enough to not miss the pitch. Um, so, you know, we know a lot about the interventions. Uh, they're available in, in those first two phases. If you don't see the ball properly, we talk about things like glasses or contact lenses. Uh, that's not really relevant in this conversation other than having that proper input, as Dr. Fatty said. Muscular skills can be trained in a ver variety of different ways. Um, but this is that, again, that neurological component to what happens in, in the sports arena. So uh, what do we know about the science in the trainability or the enhancement properties of visual processing? Is, is that something that can be trained and enhanced? And, and how do we know that? Right. Uh, it, it certainly is something that can be trained. So that's why I was talking earlier about going to the research on that and kind of discovering that research. And that was 
mean, my, my wife says I have one scientific term I can throw out there. And so the one I hang my hat on <laughs> is occlusion. Yeah. Okay. Video occlusion. And I'll, I don't know if you can see this here or not. I'll show it to you like really quickly. So, you know, this is just on a, on a tab and come see how the pitch was cut off. And then I've got a guess, you know, with one, whether it's a ball or a strike or a whatever. And so that, that really is it. You just saw the whole thing. It's a, it, it's just kind of a drill and practice thing. It's going to keep hitting you with that. And the pitch is cut off and you saw about a third to a half of the pitch there. And once you kind of get it figured out, you're going to be, Oh yeah. Okay. I could see that. That was, a, that was a curve ball. It was probably uh, out of the zone. Okay. I got that. And you get immediate feedback. And so it's really, um, you know, we might think of it as dog training. I mean, it's, it's, it's stimulus response training, pretty old school behavioral training. And so, you know, I guess the thing, I don't have to think about how do I read that pitch? It's not like a real conscious thing. If you just, it's like going in the weight room. So you'd, you'd mentioned, you know, the, the strengthening sort of parts in that. This is, sure. this is something like that. You're going to have progressive difficulty. If you've got a well-designed exercise or well-designed video drill, it's isolating that particular muscle, that particular component you're trying to strengthen. And then it's working it over and over with instant feedback and progressive difficulty. Repetition, immediate feedback, progressive difficulty. And, you know, uh, animals, including humans, can, can learn some pretty spectacular tricks that way. I think we have to just, you know, acknowledge that hitting a, a well-pitched baseball is, is pretty much a trick. You've got to trick out your system to do it. To do it. The hardware is not all there to do it. So every piece of that you want to... Uh, you, you, you want to build up. So that's what's nice about this. You mentioned the at home. Um, it's, if you're trying to do your hitting at home, you're doing some kind of halfway version of it. You know, you're taking ghost swings or something. But this is really the same training protocol, the same technology that you would be using regardless. So you can kind of do 100% of this component. It's not something that's just going to sit there by itself. Obviously, you want to build that up. The, the, the jazz musicians used to say woodshed. Right? You go out in the woodshed and you work on your licks until you're ready to go on stage and throw that out there in the middle of a, an improvisation. So this is, this is where we woodshed. Uh, you know, so it's especially good during this, this shutdown period. And then, man, when you get a chance to go back into the action, then all of a sudden that ball looks bigger. Well, it didn't get any bigger. Um, you know, it's, you're not necessarily seeing it any better, but you're perceiving it in that way. And it, it actually does slow down. It actually gets bigger. And that's what people will say. That's when you know they're getting it. Not when they say, um, uh, you know, my pitch recognition is improved. They'll say, man, the ball looks big. The ball looks slow. Yeah, so I love that. And I love that term occlusion. We, we've talked about occlusion on Sports Vision Pros before, and we've talked about ways of generally improving visual processing for sport. Uh, and there's really two main mechanisms for that. One is essentially overloading the brain neurologically. So you've heard stories of athletes hitting baseballs, you know, with a 120 mile an hour pitch machine or something like that. So, you know, increasing the velocity of the target to make them have to process at a quicker rate. But another way to really effectively improve processing is through occlusion. So, you know, this is a wonderful platform for occlusion. Uh, and it's really a, a fascinating way to really improve that pitch recognition piece.